So let me begin by asking you about sort of how did you first become familiar with Rodriguez, with his life, his story, his music, and then the process of assembling the footage, the interviews, and making this film? Right, I was, this, the very start was that I was traveling around the world for uh, six months in 2006, looking for good stories with a camera, randomly scouting stories. And in Cape Town, I met Stephen Sugar Siegerman, the detective in this story. Of course, there's a detective who found this guy was supposedly dead for, for f 35 years in South Africa. And then there was a detective, and he found out that Rodriguez was uh, alive. Of course, Rodriguez was uh, in South Africa a bigger star than, than, than Rolling Stones, literally. And he was a dead superstar. And this guy, s he told me this story, Stephen Sugar Sigerman, and I immediately just, this is the best story I heard in my life. <laughs> I need to do something something with this. It's almost an unbelievable story uh, um, for yourself, Rodriguez. Oh. How do you feel about uh, the film, about Malik making oh. a film, talking to your family and your friends, and, and, and bringing your story to the masses? Well, this film book, uh, Malik Benzalou, uh, um, I think it's a remarkable thing that he got picked out of 10,000 entries to the Sundance and that he garnered the... Uh, People's Choice Award and the World Documentary Award, and and as a result, he's going to be seen in uh, 84 cities, and uh, he's on his way to Moscow with the screening. So, um, I think it's pretty exciting for us all here. And but it's it was it's his film, so Malik Benzalou's, and I, I'm happy to be part of it. It's his film, but it's but your it's, story, of yeah, course. How do you feel about your story? Being well, it's 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 accurate. I I didn't I, as I explained. I only knew the first part of the story. I didn't uh, collaborate with him and uh, how he's going to present his film, and uh, so I just knew the first part of it, and and so I don't know the uh, I, at the time I didn't know the the second part of it. So, but the climax is in '98. The film does so, and there it's it's the discovery from from. For seeing the audience, no. yeah. Well, uh, well, that's a great, obviously, a climax of the, the film. Climax a great of moment of the film is is the concert in '98 when you went back to. See. And I meet uh, Malik Benjalou in '08. So, okay. So that's that's uh, to try and explain how this all came together, and so. Uh, Take me back to that moment. How did you feel when you went to South Africa and then found out that oh. you had this huge following? Oh yeah, it's and it's all very real. Uh, <coughs> Uh, we were treated uh, very well, and uh, with, uh, and saw the audience and, and heard them singing our songs. So it was uh, it was just genuine. It wasn't like that. So it it, it must have been a redeeming feeling for you. Oh, very much so. It's, it, it, all the promises I made over my history as a musician, you know, where they are, you know, it's, that it, it uh, was made manifest. And a great moment for your family, for your children. Exactly. To see as well. Oh, yeah. That's uh, you to see dad in a new light. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yes, and yeah, exactly. So I'm a grandpa too. So I just want to mention that. So, uh, so it's a great feeling yeah. with uh, just personally. Yeah. Uh, Malik, let me ask you. I, I understand that you edited the film. You did the animation for the film. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about? Uh, I'm actually interested in the animation because I thought it was beautiful and beautifully done with your music. Could you talk about putting that together? I mean, the illustrations, not the animation. illustration. The illustration, illustration, the the black and white stuff. Yeah, I mean, it it wasn't really the meaning at all. I I I, I thought I would get professionals to to help me out because I never done this before. I had an average degree in school in painting. I knew I c I can't do that. I need, I need people to help me out. But I couldn't, because I couldn't find the money to, to pay people. And that was the only reason why <laughs> all, the, all the had to be DIY kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, I, now that you've made the film, what did you learn from the process as far as filmmaking and maybe just about the human spirit? I mean, very much. I mean, the whole thing is, the whole story is about the human spirit. Too. That what you can do, if you think about it, that, by remote control, Rodriguez was changing the world on the yeah. other side of the planet just by yeah. writing a, like no. a handful of songs that no. were, that, and, well. and not even knowing about it. You know that you can do so much with your mm. your own hands. Yeah. Well, they changed the world. That was just the background music. It's uh, uh, they demonstrated it in, in South Africa and all those uh, rallies and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, they use my music and, and uh, they tell me, so I'm told. So. Uh, last question. Are you making new music still? Oh, Are yes, you still sir. writing? Oh, yes, sir. It's like any journalist. You, you, there's no one story. You, uh, there's another story. There's, 
And so I, I play guitar all the time. It's, it's my companion for long, since I was 16. So I've been at it for a long time. I, I've done the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the zeros, and I'm working on the 10s. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we look forward to hearing more from that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, really a pleasure to meet you. Great <coughs> <film>. <laughs>